Hi, my name is Amber Terhune. I'm the health educator for the Johnson County Health Department. This presentation is about mumps. Mumps, also called infectious peritiasis, is a contagious viral infection. It primarily affects the parotid or salivary glands. Before the vaccine became available in the United States, there were about 186,000 cases reported each year. It caused about 10% of all viral meningitis cases. Since the vaccine became available in 1967, there has been more than a 99% decrease in cases. However, there has been increases in recent years due to outbreaks. There were 6,366 cases in 2016 alone. Mumps is spread through respiratory droplets from the nose, mouth, and throat. This may be done from sneezing, coughing, talking, kissing, sharing drinks or utensils, or even by touching an infected surface and then touching your face. Those groups at a higher risk of developing mumps are anyone who has not had two doses of the vaccine or already had the disease, international travelers or having contact with an international traveler, living or working in college campuses or healthcare institutions, pregnant women, and in areas of outbreaks. The incubation period for mumps is usually from 16 to 18 days, with a range anywhere from 12 to 25 days. The first symptoms usually include headache, body aches, cough, runny nose, fever, fatigue, weakness, loss of appetite, and pain with chewing or swallowing. Then the parotid glands swell below and in front of the ears. You may have puffy cheeks and a swollen jaw as the telltale signs. One or both sides may be affected. Some people have no symptoms, but they can still spread the virus. You are most contagious from two days before symptoms start until five days after the glands swell. Multiple methods may be used to diagnose mumps. A physical examination may be done, a blood test may be ordered at the time of suspicion, and a second test done five to ten days after the symptoms start, a buccal swab, which is done inside the cheek, or a throat swab. Both the buccal and throat swab should be done as soon as mumps is suspected. A urine test may also be performed. Be sure to tell the staff on the phone that you may have mumps so that they can take measures to reduce the risk of spreading infection to others. There is no specific treatment for mumps, but there are things that you can do to help ease the symptoms. Drink plenty of fluids, get plenty of rest, use a non-aspirin fever and pain medication, as aspirin can cause a rare but serious condition called Ray syndrome. You may use a warm or cold compress on swollen glands. Have a soft diet of foods that are easy to chew and swallow. Avoid acidic foods and drinks, as this can further irritate the salivary glands. You usually recover in about 10 to 12 days. Here is a list of possible complications from mumps. You may develop meningitis, orchitis, which is a swelling of the testicles and postpubescent males. In rare cases, it may cause sterility. Mastitis, which is a swelling of the breasts and postpubescent females. Oophoritis, which is a swelling of the ovaries and postpubescent females. Deafness, encephalitis, pancreatitis, permanent neurological damage, miscarriage if infected during pregnancy, and rarely death. You should see a doctor if you are exposed to mumps and susceptible, or if you develop severe symptoms, such as stiff neck, seizures, extreme drowsiness, change in consciousness, abdominal pain, high fever, trouble eating or drinking, and pain or swelling in the testicles. Vaccination is the best way to prevent mumps. The vaccine is about 78% effective after one dose and about 88% effective after two doses. The recommended ages to receive the vaccine are dose one at age 12 to 15 months and dose two at age four to six years. Vaccines may be received earlier in the case of international travel or outbreaks. You can always catch up doses later for older children or adults. Be sure to talk to your doctor to find out if you need vaccinated. Indiana requires two doses of vaccine or proof of immunity for kindergarten through 12th grade enrollment. Many colleges require it as well. 
Another dose of vaccine may be recommended during outbreaks. There are two vaccines available, the MMR, which is measles, mumps, and rubella, and Proquad, or MMRV, which is measles, mumps, rubella, and varicella. There is no vaccine only for mumps. Some people are unable to be vaccinated due to age or medical conditions, so those around them should be vaccinated. Despite some beliefs, there is no evidence to support the idea that the vaccine is linked to autism. If you are infected, be sure to avoid others, especially if they've never had mumps or the vaccine, or if they are in a high complication risk category. Stay home from work, school, and daycare while infectious. This concludes the mumps presentation. If you have any questions, please visit any of these websites, contact your doctor or your local health department. Thank you.